All right, so in testing for monovision, what we're going to do is we're first going to show you on the distance chart what you can see when both eyes are fully corrected. And you'll probably find you can see the bottom line quite well, and you may find that um, the white square is perfect. When we do monovision, you may find you're still seeing the bottom line, but that the white outline is slightly more blurred. And that's the information you're getting off the reading eye. So what you have there now is 2020 vision, and I'm, I'm going to leave you at planar. Okay, and I'm going to show you what happens when we start going through the assessment of monovision. So that's both eyes perfect, and this is how it looks if someone has full monovision. So that's how things look with perfect vision, and that's your reference, so that you might call 100%. Mm -hmm. And what do you rate it when we do this? Does it get better? Does it get worse? Worse. Exactly. So if this is 100, what do you think this drops down to? Um, quite low, I'd say 60, 70. Alright, so that's suggesting very strongly that you don't like monovision. Mm. Okay, I'm going to show you something else which will be mini monovision. And let's see if you see a difference with that. Here's 100%. And how does it look when I do this? Yeah, that's pretty good. Slightly better. Yeah. Alright, so that's suggesting quite strongly that you'd accept 0 minus 1 but not necessarily zero minus two. No. Okay, and then one of the ways we test this further is to see which eye is suppressing. So this here is called the Worth 4 dot test. And on the Worth 4 dot test, there's a red filter in front of your right eye and there's a green filter in front of your left eye. And with your right eye, you land up seeing the red diamond and a red dot. And with your left eye, you land up seeing two green crosses and a green dot. So sometimes people see the white dot when both eyes are open, and that means the two eyes are being used by the brain equally well. And some of these cases don't do that well for monovision because you like using both at the same time. Sometimes you see it as being red, and these cases do well because the brain is choosing to use the right eye for distance, and it's finding it easy to suppress the left eye. And likewise, if you see it better on green, the brain is using the left eye and it's easy to suppress the right eye. And then you find a, a final group where the white dot you see there in fact flickers between red and green, red and green. And that's again someone who knows how to suppress. So this gives us a big insight into how your suppression works. So I'm going to show you how the suppression works. So if you look at that chart there, how many items do you see on the wall? Uh, well I see all four. Great. What color is the dot at the bottom? Uh, the dot on the bottom is switching. Between? Green and red. Right, fantastic. So you are alternately suppressing. So that suggests your brain would know how to suppress. If you want your distance eye, it suppresses the near one. If you want your near eye, you suppress the distance one. So that looks promising for monovision. Great. The next thing we do is we show you this. It's called the fixation disparity test, or distance fixation disparity. And the right eye, again, has a filter that only sees the 12 o'clock and the 3 o'clock red line and the left eye only sees the 6 o'clock and the 9 o'clock red line. If you see all four, you know the eyes, the brain's using both eyes. And if they form a cross, you know the brain's using both eyes and the alignment is perfect. If you have one eye that's heavily suppressed, you'll only see the 3 o'clock or you'll only see the quarter to 6. Let's have a look at this. This is your distance fixation disparity. How many red lines do you see? Four. All four. Right, so that means both eyes, the two eyes are dissociated, yet the brain's using both. And the four lines, do they form any particular shape? Uh, well, the, a cross. A little cross. Yeah. Right, perfect. So even though the two eyes are dissociated, the brain's still ensuring your eyes are aligned. So your, li your eyes are perfectly straight. And then the final test we do is called stereo vision. And on the stereo vision test, this one made perfect sense to you now because you don't have the filters up in front of you, but you land up seeing 3D, and those four double bars in the center present as bars that are standing out closer towards you. And the closest one is the one on the left, then the one at the bottom, then the one on the right, and then the one on top. And when, if you have stereo vision, if both eyes are fully corrected, you land up seeing that perfectly as a spiral, left closest and in a spiral, top first. What we do now is we start introducing monovision 
and we start reducing the distance vision on your reading eye until we find that you lose the stereo effect. And once you've lost the stereo effect, then the monovision is simply too far. And we'll bring it back again to where, despite having monovision, you still have stereo vision. And that just means that you land up afterwards with good vision for distance where you still feel there's a sense of stereopsis or three-dimensional vision while you can see up close without the need for glasses. So these are just tests to help you make it um, a more complete evaluation in the office. And now I'm going to show you the, the stereo test. So what you should see now is potentially something that looks as though it's coming out towards you and isn't necessarily on the wall. Yeah. Right, so what do you see out there? I see uh, four lines that, that look like they're coming out from the wall. Right, fantastic. Which one's closest to you? The one on the left. Second closest? The bottom one. Third closest? Three o'clock. Great, okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if, um, let me just get this right, I'm going to see if we can, if by doing monovision we're going to reduce that. So I'm going to start adding reading vision in front of your left eye and I want you to tell me at what point you start seeing the 3D isn't so good anymore. Can you still see 3D? Yes. Can you still see 3D? Yes. Can you still? Yes. Right, so that was the mini monovision. That fits in well. With mini monovision, you said that looks quite good. And with mini monovision, you still have stereopsis. This is one and a quarter. One and a half. You still got 3D? Um, it's kind of going now. Absolutely. And you have full monovision, and now yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Totally. And that's why, for you, this is just a step too far. If we give you full monovision, you lose stereopsis for distance. So it's going to make a lot more sense to go with something like this, mini monovision, where you maintain stereopsis for distance. And that's it. That should give you a very good solution. I'll take it back to you. This is what you have for... with both eyes perfect. But with both eyes perfect, you can't read up close. When you do monovision, the distance reduces a bit, but now you can read. Yeah. So this is your distance vision at the moment with both eyes perfect, and that's quite tricky. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with monovision, that looks a little better. Yeah. So what you're really weighing up is you're weighing up how much did the monovision make my distance worse in return for how much did the monovision make my near better. And if you find the distance reduces only slightly, but the near improves a whole lot, then you've got a good solution. Great.